Time now for Keller at Large. Here's John. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, tomorrow's Patriots Day holiday is sort of an unofficial start to the prime tourism season here in the Boston area. That, in turn, is a crucial engine of our regional economy. So it's a perfect time to take the pulse of the economy with our guest this morning. He's the president and CEO of the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce, Jim, Ru Jim Rooney, excuse me, Jim, whose resume includes overseeing the Mass Convention Center Authority, serving as chief of staff to the late Mayor Thomas. Nino, and perhaps his crowning achievement, president of his class at Boston Latin School. Very proud of that, John. Was that a rigged election, Jim, or was that on they, the level? They, there was all sorts of recounts, but I won. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Good to have you nice here. Nice to be here. So, prime Boston office buildings yeah. have been selling lately for half or less of their pre-pandemic values as the work from home phenomenon continues to sort of hollow out the downtown economy. As a result, a recent report by the well-respected Center for State Policy Studies at Tufts on behalf of the Boston Policy Institute forecast major reductions in the city's property tax revenues that were paid by these building owners and that could mean a huge hole in the city's budget. Mayor Wu this past week called those projections quote fake information. Who's right? Well, um, I don't think they're fake information, and I think that, the, the, you know, the projections are based on some sets of assumptions that any economic forecast goes into, so, you know, one could challenge the assumptions, but let's take a step back and talk about the importance of commercial real estate in Boston as it relates to the city's budget. It's the golden goose. Seventy percent of the city's budget, or revenue budget, comes from property taxes, most of that from the commercial property taxes. And one of the reasons why our property taxes, residential property taxes in Boston are so low, among the lowest in the Commonwealth, is because the commercial property tax rate is proportionally higher, and we've created all kinds of new commercial property over the past 20 years. Think about the seaport, John, and the growth down there. Um, so what's happening now, as you said, we're in this post-pandemic era in which what is the workforce going to do has resulted in 20% vacancy rates, has diminished the values, and they're selling for discounts up to 50% of what they were bought for five and ten years ago. And on top of that, interest rates are so high, it's tough to get money to build new inventory. And you add all those numbers up, and if you look at the mayor's budget this year, there's a 41% reduction from new commercial real estate property from last year. A big drop in that number. So the projections are beginning to, to come to fruition. Well, when the Menino administration faced a similar issue in 2003-2004 with the bursting of the dot-com yeah. bubble and other economic issues. Uh, there was a lot of budget cutting that went on yeah. along with an effort now being duplicated by Mayor Wu to get permission from the state to raise the commercial property tax rate. But Mayor Wu's new budget increases by 8%. What's going on? Yeah, um, that's a troubling combination, John. And in addition to this proposal to increase the tax rate on commercial property, in the context that I just described of a struggling commercial real estate market, not just here in Boston, this is national, so, but that's the reality and that's not her fault. Um, but on top of that, um, We've seen proposals for transfer fees. We've seen proposals for increased linkage fees. We've seen stricter energy efficiency requirements that increase the cost of new construction. You add that to all the other things I said before, building anything new in Boston is becoming almost impossible. Um, so you've got this situation where the mayor's introducing these financial burdens along with process changes and the like, and at the same time, increasing spending by 8%. To the, to the 
community, that's a curious combination. Well, we've got to take a break, but I, I, I'm sure there are people watching us right now who are saying, oh, oh, oh boo-hoo, these wealthy uh, developers and property owners are, are going to make a little less uh, wealth uh, in this cycle. Why should I care about them? Uh, why is this a problem? Briefly, address that viewer. Well, um, I, I go back to what I said at the beginning. You're not nurturing the golden goose, you're strangling the golden goose of commercial real estate that has kept residential property taxes down and that have funded police, fire, and schools for decades in Boston. All right, on that note, let's take our break and we'll continue our conversation about the local economy with the president and CEO of the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce, Jim Rooney, in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our conversation with Jim Rooney. He's the CEO of the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce. And Jim, before we move on to other subjects here, we were talking about an 8% increase in Boston's budget at a time of, of sort of revenue uncertainty. Mm -hmm. uh, the state budget has ballooned in recent years under both Governors Healy and Baker. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I understand it's been tough times for fiscal management with the pandemic mm -hmm. and, and everything, and then all the federal money that came in, which is now pretty much gone. What's, what are your concerns about what these budget increases at the state and city level do to our economy long term? Yeah, um, they're clearly not sustainable. We looked at the state after last year's budget, and it had grown 30% over five years, and we issued a warning that that's an unsustainable rate of growth. The revenue aren't going to keep coming in at that, great, at that rate, and we're going to need to moderate our spending levels in line with inflation. We're not saying cut, cut, cut. What we're saying is in line with inflation. And thankfully, this year's budget proposal is about 3.3%. Inflation is about the same. The so, state budget the you're state talking budget, about. The state yeah. budget. Now, on the other hand, you mentioned you know, the mayor's proposal on the commercial tax, um, property tax um, rate increase. Uh, as you said, when Mayor Menino faced the cha some of the similar challenges, not exactly the same, um, he level funded and cut jobs. So, you know, there are choices here that we have to make, and some of them are difficult. If you look at the past three years in city budgets, uh, they've grown six, four, and six percent, highest since 2000, and eight is the highest I've ever heard. Um, so you've got an unsustainable rate of growth in spending at the same time that we're proposing to strangle this golden goose. Well, the mayor casts this mm -hmm. in the context of protecting residential taxpayers from uh, tax hikes. Yeah. And also the spending is, you know, for schools. It's not like they're spending on, uh, on lobster dinners for mm -hmm. her and her staff. Yeah. Quite the contrary. She's forwarding a set of priorities that she campaigned on and overwhelmingly won election on. What about that? Well, uh, you know, we don't suspect that there's lobster dinners in there, but, yeah. you know, all of us, whether we're individuals, businesses, we're in a post-pandemic belt tightening mode. We're looking at the way spending is going on. Uh, we're looking at ways of being inefficient and, you know, looking at the nice-to-haves versus the need-to-haves that you talked about, public safety, education. The yeah. business community, of course, supports all of that. Uh, but there comes a time uh, that you prepare for and you execute on practicing fiscal discipline because absent that, the long-term prospects of the city and the region begin to diminish. Well, speaking of education, I, we don't only have a minute left here, yeah. and I do want to squeeze this in. Um, the Healy administration has been pushing back pretty hard on the Mass Teachers Association, the big teacher unions uh, proposal to drop the MCAS as a requirement for graduation. You take it mm -hmm. several times, and it helps them chart who's struggling to meet certain standards. Uh, your organization opposes this. Why? We oppose the elimination of the MCAS test. A as, a, as a graduation. Yes, yes. So we're on the same side as the governor. And yeah. the speaker came out um, against eliminating the MCAS test as well. I think there's unanimity in the, in the business community. In 1993, education reform, more money for education with accountability. What results are we seeing? You know, how are our kids doing? 
what do the results say so we can practice interventions, whether it's interventions around equity and municipal and urban districts? How do we address those? 90% of our children pass the MCAS on the first try, 96% pass it on the second try, and then there's about 700 that do not pass it. We can address the needs of those 700 kids without eliminating it. The alternative is not having a statewide standard, having 351 cities and towns deciding what the standard is. John, I don't have to tell you what that will look like, having everyone in the Commonwealth, every city and town, create their own standards for graduation. Well, Jim, it's been our custom to have you in to talk a couple times a year. Let's keep, let's keep doing that. Look forward to having you here again soon. Thank, Thank you, you very John. much. Thanks for having me. That's Jim Rooney, CEO of the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce.